Well, hello, everybody, and Happy New Year. Bill here with Mike, uh, as usual, and we are super excited to be together again. It's 2022, Mike. How about that? It's very crazy around here, for sure. Uh, the snow just <laughs> melted in front of our house, man, and it's, it's, it, it's hard to believe, but 2022 is here, and 2021 is finally behind us. Praise the yeah. Lord. Yeah, <laughs> I think I feel like we were saying that a year ago. Wow, we're so glad 2020 is gone. It's in our rearview mirror and now on to 21. And, <laughs> I know, right? And it was cut and paste <laughs> more than anything else. So, uh, but it is great to be together again, uh, uh, chatting with you, Mike. And and um, and this is going to be a, a a really fun little conversation, uh, I think, for everybody. And I, I know for for me, I'm looking forward to chatting with you uh we're gonna we're gonna do something that that uh, uh my wife jody and i we started doing with with some friends of ours many years ago uh right around uh new year's and and that is sharing our highs and lows from the past year and then thinking about some goals for the next year and also making a few fun predictions uh for the next year so uh what do you think about that I think that sounds like a great idea. I love all of it. I'm, the prediction part, I'm going to be excited to hear what you have to say, but I, I'm, I'm no Nostradamus over here, but I'm excited to hear what you have to say. It'll be fun. <laughs> well, it, I think it'll be fun. We'll see if we have time to get into too many predictions, but uh, uh, but this whole idea of doing this, this highs, lows, goals, and predictions thing, we started off doing it um, uh, many, many years ago with, with, with a, a, a couple of friends and, and, uh, and in, in more recent years, uh, we've been doing this with a lot of our, our legacy groups and, and it's yeah. really become uh, uh, really a fun tradition with, with a number of our groups. And, and, and we, we always have somebody that, that is, is, is kind of our, our uh, scribe who writes everything down and, 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 and keeps it uh, for the next year. And then, and then when the group gets together a year later, we, we uh, reflect back and we, we look at what we wrote a year ago and especially uh, kind of, like how'd you do on that goal, and how and 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 what about that prediction? And usually the predictions end up being pretty funny because, uh, for example, I was just looking through one of my predictions from a year ago, and and that was that the Seahawks would um, would go twelve and four and and um, you know be in the playoffs at this point. And, and, and you're such an optimist, man. <laughs> yeah, not so much. Well, a year ago that wasn't such a bad prediction since they'd gone they'd gone twelve and four the year before. So. But um, anyways, so so that's the kind of thing that so that's why are we talking about this in this podcast? It, because this hopefully would be um, a tool that 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 everybody could use to uh, bring your group together. It's a it's a great tool to start a conversation with somebody that's very yeah. non threatening and and certainly you can have a conversation like this anytime, but especially really anytime in January. Uh, it's such a great conversation. Well, hey, it's January, and you know, tell me about a few highs and lows from from 2021, and what are, what are some of the things that you're thinking about coming up this for this next year? That are some of your goals and things like that. So it's a great conversation you can have with people. So yeah, yeah, Love it. yeah. So uh, so let's do a little bit of bit of that, uh, and. Um, what are what are uh, Mike? How about for you? Uh, let's 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 start off just with highs. Um, one or two personal highs for you from this from twenty twenty one. I think my highest uh, personal thing, uh, honestly, has just been the time that I've had with my family. And again, we've talked about COVID and the craziness of it, and the politics and all the stuff that's going on in our world. Uh, but one of the things that's forced us to do is to be home more, and so. It's been pretty awesome to get that time with my family. And in 2021, I, I think I will look back and think, man, this was a great year for being with the family because I'm already seeing, I got another kid getting a license in a couple of months. And so I'm sure he'll be gone. And, you know, so it's, I'm going to treasure it for sure. Uh, yeah. That was a big high. Uh, what about you? Any, any big highs that stand out? Well, yeah, I, I think I think for me, uh, uh, and again, you know, we it, it, this is a thirty minute podcast, so we don't have time to get into a lot of stuff uh, right now uh, because obviously we could talk for a half an hour each just on highs. 
probably, sure. you know, but, but, the uh, Lord is but <laughs> the Lord is good. Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, but, but uh, so in 2020, uh, my son and his wife uh, wanted to have their wedding and, and it was postponed, postponed, postponed uh, with COVID yeah. and That's finally right. ended up at the end of end of the summer of 2020, just, just getting married with, you know, 10 or 12 people and just, just because they wanted to be married. And so we just had a small uh, ceremony just so they could be married. And so, um, so in the summer of 21, this it was either July or August, I can't remember, but they did a round two to say I do. And so they, they got to have their, their uh, big wedding. And, and that was really fun. And did and, you uh, make the so, cut for both weddings? I did. I did make the cut for both weddings, which is, which is really great. That should be so, a high too. I'm hoping that, that was, that I can get invited <laughs> to their weddings. Like that's a big dream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, it, that was, that was a big high. So yeah. So that's, that's a high. What about, what about uh, when you think about uh, legacy in the in the ministry this past year, what would be one of your highs? Well, you you know me, Bill. I, I enjoy I really enjoyed launching this podcast with you, so that's been really fun. But I think the high I would have to list would be launching our leadership training program. Um, I that legacy leader training program is kind of like I don't mm. it's both of our brainchild, but it's something that I think both of us are really passionate about is training up leaders who want to be disciples and make disciples and giving them tangible tools, coaching and encouragement and vision. And um, I've, I've really, uh, I really enjoyed our first round with, with the guys that we had and got uh, just myself. I found myself rejuvenated starting two discipleship groups in these next couple of weeks. And um, so, yeah, that was a big high for me. Um, I'm sure that was probably on your list too, but anything else that stands out as a big high from the ministry? Well, I would totally agree with you uh, that that was definitely a high for me. And as well as uh, this podcast has been a high uh, and, and along with those, I think it's, it's like, it always is with almost anything. It comes down to relationships and, and um, this past year um, doing what we do with legacy, it, it's pretty amazing that we are, are freed up and privileged to, be able to have so many incredibly rich conversations with people. And, and, yeah. uh, and I think as, as I look back at, at this past year, um, I mean, it's, it's just these amazing conversations and, and times to uh, share personal things and to pray together and to see people reconnecting to Jesus and reconnecting to their faith. And uh, I mean, so th I think that's definitely been the highest for me. So uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so lows are not as fun. We don't spend a lot of time on lows, but, but uh, uh, maybe, a, maybe a low from this past year, whether it's personal or with, with, uh, with legacy or just, just anything kind of looking back. Well, I, I, you know, this, and I don't think I've told other people this, but um, I definitely had a couple of lows this year and in personal relationships with other people where um, I was misunderstood or I said something in a way that I shouldn't have said it and hurt their feelings. And so then they got all mad and angry. Um, and I don't want to say too much because they may listen to this podcast, but I always hate it when that happens. And, and you know, because I tend to be the type of person who tells people what I'm thinking and who, who tries to process things with people. And some people just can't do that. And I don't do it well, frankly, sometimes and say the wrong things in the wrong way. And anyway, uh, there were a couple of times where I had that apologize and and eat crow and and uh be humbled and so that mm. I, those are always my lows you know like because i feel like i'm damaging relationships with people by hurting them even if my intention was not to do that if that's the result that's just mm. uh, and that that for me is for my personal low for sure yeah yeah and i had a few I, of those this year yeah yeah i think for me as i look back at 21 uh i would have to say that it's just been all of the the things uh, surrounding COVID uh, is, sure. has been has been a real low for me and and regardless of what people's opinions are on on vaccines and vaccine mandates and masks and shutdowns and all those kinds of things just all of the stuff that surrounds that it's just like like I really we would joke about it but you know I really did kind of think that that um, we were done 
um, after 2020 or, or close to being done. And, and, um, and the fact that we have continued to um, battle this thing and, and have it be such a, a major thing that, that we have to talk about all the time, it's been so f- forefront and affecting every one of our lives and relationships and gatherings and traveling and, 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 um, and, and even, like you said, conversations that, that can go south if, if you're talking with somebody that doesn't share your same opinion on any one of those things. And um, it's just like life is hard enough normally and adding all of those additional things on there has just has continued to be um, a, a challenge. And, and, and uh, somebody said um, the other day, well, this is day 665 of 15 days to slow the spread. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, my gosh, that's they told us, wasn't it? Back in whatever the spring of 2020, you know, 15 days to slow the spread. And here we are two years later and it's like oh my gosh so well even if we're talking there bill i'm getting the pain is in my chest from the people i talked with who were losing their jobs or who were uh lost their businesses and it, it you're right it it is it has been an, a challenging season and it is politically just it been such an a uh, ostracizing you know, yeah. if you one way and another person believes another way, then you can no longer talk to each other, evidently. And, and yeah. it is it has really created so much friction and challenge. I didn't even think about that when I was thinking of my things. I was thinking more just my own personal stupid things. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, we've all got plenty of, of, of things. <laughs> In fact, it's funny, you know, it's, uh, and then we'll, we'll we'll move on to the goals and and things but uh uh it is funny when 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 you um do this in a group uh <laughs> the the uh the lows oftentimes uh end up taking longer because people have so many uh i mean it's regrets it's just, yeah. yeah regrets and 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 like you said just things like man i wish i hadn't have said that and and oh it's just such a bummer that that happened and that kind of thing and and so um so be ready for that when you when you uh, have these kinds of conversations with people. Well, I think that's a good segue, though, as we're thinking about regrets and thinking about things that we wish we could have done differently. We both believe in a God of do-overs. We believe in a God of grace. We believe yeah. in a God who takes us as we are, forgives us, but gives us his spirit in us to change us. And on my other podcast, The Daily Nugget, I for this week, I'm going to be talking about ways that we can start over and uh, areas of life that we can start over. And, and I'm a big believer in uh, that God has given us these things as a gift. Each day has 24 hours in it. And in fact, God even gives us instructions in the days to say, hey, don't don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't don't mm-hmm. take yesterday's problems into today and don't take today's problems into tomorrow. And yeah. I you were you know, we were talking about that before this all began. And, and same thing with the week. God has given us every week. And, and in the Old Testament, it was a Sabbath on Saturday where it's like a do-over day. We stop, we worship, and then we start the next week, the next day. And what a great way. And then I also think that uh, we God has given us the years. He designed the universe in such a way that it goes around the sun, you know, 365 days. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe you would add a third on top of that, but it's like... Um, there's a sense where there's a rhythm of life that God gives us for starting over and for newness. And that's every day, every week, and every year. And each one should have a different sense of newness to it. Um, A few verses that stand out to me, uh, the apostle Paul wrote in Philippians, he said, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize, for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I love that idea. I mean, one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. Most of the people who I talk to are so stuck in the past and stuck in their old habits, stuck in their old ways, that they cannot let it go and they cannot change. And it is heartbreaking. And I I see it in myself too in habits too. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm saying guilty human, but some people really are stuck. Um, but the Bible also tells us, and the Apostle Paul wrote these same things. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. 
the old is gone and the new has come. And yeah. were I to, you know, I think I've told you this before, but um, when I learned from Larry Crabb on this verse is, is quite simply that the deepest part of every believer is the power and presence of Holy Spirit wanting to be exactly like Christ. It's a new creation. And our job as fellow believers is to coax that out of each other, to bring that goodness and light and that presence of Christ out of each other, to, to take off the things that are old and leave them behind and put on the things that are new. And then the Bible ends, and this is kind of a cool thing, Revelation 21, after the Bible begins with the fall and sin and destruction, all the craziness and brokenness, it ends with this promise, Jesus saying, behold, I make all things new. Mm -hmm. And I love that that's how the Bible ends. It's not the exact last words of the Bible, um, but it is in the last chapter. It's right the centerpiece of it all. I make all things new. And so as I think about, you know, every January, uh, I especially think about this gift that God has given us to do a do-over. Uh, yeah. it's, it's a chance to set new goals and new, new things. I don't know. What's your thoughts on any of that? Well, I love those passages and, and, uh, and, and, uh, and this time of year, it's, it's like, it's so cool. Like you said, that God gives us this rhythm of, of a new year. And, and it, it is a chance for us to uh, kind of uh, put the last year in the rear view mirror with the exception of like how you can learn from it, you know, and then, and then let's move forward and, 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 and set some goals uh, coming up and we call them new year's resolutions sometimes. And, uh, and those things are, uh, sometimes helpful, sometimes not so helpful. And, and, um, I think like with, with our high souls goals and predictions, we try to, we try to do things that are, that are realistic and, and not, not pie in the sky, especially for, for these, these, um, these goals so many times. And, and I don't know if you know any statistics on this, but I, I would just imagine that the new year's resolutions statistically must be overwhelmingly failures. I would, I would guess. I mean, certainly based on like, like, and you know me, I'm, I, I go to the gym almost every day and, and, um, and, and it's always a big joke around this time of year uh, when, when all the noobs show up, you know, the new year's resolutions and, and they're there for a few weeks. And, and then uh, before you know it, you know, like, well, even it's like, yeah, Oh, look at that guy. It's going to be interesting to see how long he lasts. And, and, you know, sure enough, you know, month or so into it you know most of them are gone and you're back to the regulars and you know so no yeah i totally see that and i've, I've been that person in the past and so i totally hear that <laughs> well totally it's funny that. we were we were talking about um it, uh, uh uh some different podcasts that we each listened to and and um we both realized that we had listened to different podcasts who had interviewed the same guy, uh, this this guy named James Clear, and, yeah. and he talks he talks about some practical ways on how to, you know, make resolutions in a sense, and to make goals and to and to help these things to not fail. Why don't you share a little bit about what what you picked up from that? Well, I, I think what I liked about it was the idea that it's the little rhythms and habits that we're in that really are transforming and little things that we do can deeply impact our lives, the direction of our lives, the, the happiness in our lives, the joy in our lives, the relationships in yeah. our lives. Uh, and um, what I took away from it was God gives us the opportunity to become the person he calls us to be. Or, you know, if, if we're changed the other way, you can become the person you want to be. Um, and hopefully we, those things are the same for Christians. <laughs> you know, who yeah. God wants us to be is who we want to be. And by learning to develop new habits, um, we can change and we can become different people. And uh, one of the fruits of the spirit, you know, is self-discipline. And it's the, the one that I think holds all the other fruits together that makes the others come out is yeah. by us learning to say no to certain things so that we can say yes to other things. And almost always the things that we're saying no to are the urgent things. Uh, sometimes those urgent things are pleasure things like social media, or maybe it's games on our phone, or, or maybe it's something else. But almost always it's something like that where it's 
it's an urgent thing that catches our attention and in order for us to say yes to a, a better habit uh, and a better idea and i don't there's a lot of studies out there um and I, i'm not an expert in this stuff but in general um, most people think it takes about three weeks to develop a new habit and um, so if you do it every day for three weeks um, you can develop a new habit now those things don't become certain habits till two or three months. And some of them are easier than others. Obviously going to the gym is, is a little different than, you know, having a glass of water every day to start your day. I mean, those are, one's really easy, one's relatively difficult. And so they're gonna take, you know, different times to, right, to do. Right, but right. Uh, what also goes interesting though, is it takes about one month to break a habit. Uh, so if you have a bad habit, you can break it in a month. And if you have a good habit, you can lose it in a month. And so there is a sense of, of rhythm. And like I said, and what we've been talking about is I think God gives us these as gifts, these days, weeks, and years to, to really contemplate and to develop new habits. Uh, what stood yeah. out to you? Anything else that stood out in that, in the James Clearer book uh, to you? Well, I think the, the main thing that stood out for me was the idea of of baby steps and yeah like for example as 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 we think about this new year i think a lot of people um have goals for uh losing weight and dieting or or maybe it would be for uh reading the bible and and uh like okay i want to read the bible like 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 this this in 2021 i never really read the bible very much maybe just a couple of times but this year in 22 I'm going to read through the entire Bible in a year, which means like reading four or five chapters a day. It's like me, you know what, if, if you, if you haven't been reading the Bible, like at all, I mean, I mean, it'd be great if you did that, you know, read through the Bible in a year, but, but it might not be a bad idea to just, you know, start off with the idea of just like, my goal is to at least crack the Bible open. Like I read a verse or something each day, yeah. read a verse. Uh, a day yeah. and, and start with that, uh, and, you know, and, and so that's where you, you become, uh, like the, 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 the gym thing that he talks about is like, I want to start going to the gym. So just go to the gym and stay for five minutes, which sounds kind of ridiculous, but, but it's like, just do that for a week and then, and then maybe add, so then maybe you, you say, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm, it's kind of silly to just go for five minutes. So why don't I go for 30 minutes? And, and, um, yeah. And, and, and like you say, after three weeks, then you become, I'm now a person that goes to the gym three to five times a week. And, and then, yeah. and then it becomes a habit. And then after a few months, it becomes certain and those kinds of things. So, um, so I like that, that, I, that idea of the, the baby steps. Well, and the book is actually called Atomic Habits, and at the, the words at the top are pretty cool. It says, tiny changes, remarkable results. And so I think that's a great summary of what you're saying. Tiny changes for remarkable results. Yeah, Atomic yeah. Habits. Yeah. Uh, I like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll shift gears, Bill, and, you know, why don't you share a couple of things that for this year you're thinking about for your own do-overs or your own personal goals or things. Yeah, things. yeah, yeah. I've been thinking of changing. Yeah, yeah. Well, well um, I have I have two that I want to mention. One is, uh, <laughs> and anybody that knows me, I, I, I talk about this all the time, but it, you know, it, it continues to be a goal, and that is that I will uh, I will pick up my Bible, my paper, like real Bible, um, before I pick up my phone in the mornings. And, nice. and I'm, and, and I'm pretty good about, about getting time with the Lord every day, um, uh, because I'm partially, because I'm really blessed to have a schedule that allows me to do that. And we're empty and, nesters. Yeah. So we, we don't have the distractions of, of kids running around and all that kind of stuff, you know, but it is so easy for me. I'm weak. <laughs> I get distracted so easily by my phone. And, and so, so one of my goals is, is to, uh, to leave my phone plugged in in the kitchen and get my cup of coffee and go into the living room and sit down and spend time with the Lord and, and reading the Bible and, and journaling and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so, so that's one of my goals. In fact, uh, January 1st, 
I started off really great. Uh, Jody and I are recently uh, just reading through the book of Matthew and, and um, January 1st, I read, uh, we were just happened to be on Matthew six and nice. in, in the passion translation uh, uh, verse 33 and 34, super familiar verse. It's worded a little bit differently than most people know the verse, but you'll still recognize it as I read it. It says, so above all, constantly seek God's kingdom and his righteousness. Then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. Refuse to worry about tomorrow, but deal with each challenge that comes your way one day at a time. Tomorrow will take care of itself. So it's that rhythm that you talked about earlier, Mike, you know, and, and, and it was so cool for me reading that, that passage on January 1st, this idea of constantly seeking God's kingdom and constantly seeking his righteousness and, and just trusting him uh, for all the other things in my life and, and, and uh, that kind of thing. So, so that's definitely one of my goals. And, and then uh, the other goal that, that, um, that I think a lot of people have struggled just like I have these last couple of years with, with uh, church and with churches shutting down and, and all of the confusion and, and, wow. and, and things surrounding that. And, and that idea of, of, of a month to make a habit, to, to break a habit uh, yeah. is, is like, wow, when all those churches shut down and then, and then, everything was just online and we were watching church online for the longest time. And then, and then that started getting old, at least for us. And, and, and I know sure. people love it, but, but for us it did. And, and, uh, and then as things started opening up, but we were super inconsistent and, and, and 2021 was not a good year for us in terms of church attendance and, and not because we don't believe in it and support it and want to do yeah. it, but it's like, but it's like any habit, you know, we got out of the habit. Yeah. And, and so, and so one of our goals uh, for this year is to get back in the habit of, of, of regular uh, church attendance. And, and um, so far uh, we're batting a thousand, nice. <laughs> you nice. know, 2022. We're, 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 yeah. We're, we're, uh, started off with a bang so that's that's pretty cool oh that's awesome yeah uh, i have a few goals that were pretty similar to yours um i do uh do uh bible reading regularly but i've done the machine reading plan a number of times and um i had a buddy of mine who does it and then i you know if you've heard of tim keller he's done it every year for 21 years and it's basically a Bible reading plan that walks you through the Old Testament once and the New Testament twice during the year. And like you said, it's not for everybody. Don't get me wrong, but I've done it a number of times. And uh, I wanted to do it again this year. So I've said that is one of my goals is to do that. I use the U version only because it helps me uh, stay accountable. I like your idea of the paper idea, and I may try to, to do a hybrid of that, but it really helps me know if I'm on track or not on track with that. So I yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, but I understand what you're saying with the paper and the, there's something about that that's really nice. Um, and especially for us older guys, we've used to reading our Bible and paper. So it's weird to, I'm sure younger folks don't even think about paper as a, <laughs> you know, a thing. Like it doesn't yeah. matter. That yeah. Yeah. Um, I also had another goal in this one. I think the Lord was really pressing on me was to go through a book with my older boys uh, and a study. And in fact, we're going to have this available on our website at some point, I think too, but the measure of men by Gene Getz is one of those books, uh, that goes through the character. He walks through the characters for elders and deacons, you know, the, the list that is given there. Yeah. Right. And like, what does it mean to be a godly man? And so, um, that's what I'm going to do there. And it would apply for women too, frankly, but I'm going to use it with my boys. And I think it'll be a great tool. And the last one's a little bit more fun. Um, uh, as Bill knows, in, in December, I decided to buy a golf pass and to try and get back into golf. And so uh, that's one of my goals. It's more of a fun goal is to get back into golf. It's, uh, I'd like to play once a week and uh, for this year coming up. And I think I'm going to join a, um, a cheaper course option and, and do that for two reasons. One, I I enjoy golf too. It's a chance to kind of be with other people on occasion. And three, when I'm not with other people, it's actually one of the best ways that I connect with the Lord in my own life is walking a beautiful course and 
thinking and there's just so much thinking that I do on the golf course that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And so I've missed that with my kids now getting old enough, I can finally get back into it again. I've always felt like, man, I can't be gone that long because I've got all this stuff. And so I'm kind of excited to get back into that. Like I said, I mean, I, hopefully my score won't be so bad that I'll quit. We'll just see how it goes. <laughs> uh, what about a prediction, Bill? You have any predictions for us? Well, I do. And, 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 and this this would be a fun way to wrap this this whole thing up. And and again, uh, I I guess I just you know why are we talking about this on a discipleship podcast? Uh, because I think, like we said, this is such a great way to build relationships with people. Again, whether it's just a one on one in a coffee shop or whether it's with your small group, uh, it's just okay. a really cool way to 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 build those kinds of things. So, um, but I'm going to put it on record right now. Predictions. This time next year, January 2023, Russell Wilson, Pete Carroll, John Schneider, you know, we're Seahawks fans here. I know there's people that listen to this in other parts of the country and other parts of the world, but we're Seahawks fans. Um, all three will still be here, and the Seahawks will be in the playoffs. There you go. That doesn't seem super bold, man. I was expecting something <laughs> even bolder. Uh, well they're they're five and ten right now so or six and ten or whatever they are uh i guess i don't i'm not really good at predictions but were i to guess uh for this year what i would see happening in the world and in the united Ooh. states in particular is I, I do think that we have gotten so polarized that i cannot help but think that it, it's going to get better and i i think that we may see a i don't know if a backlash is the right that's not the right term but a a flip where people will uh start to be, become less dogmatic about things and it could go the other way where we just get further entrenched but my hope and goal is that we'll have a little bit less of let's go brandon and and those type of things and a little bit more of a hey we're in this together and um, again, that, that might be a crazy, bold prediction, but I sure hope that that's the case. So what do you think um, a year from now, uh, is COVID going to be in our rearview mirror? And we're going to be talking about how we used to deal with COVID. And we used to have to wear masks and all that kind of stuff. Are we still going to be uh, where we're at now? I think COVID's done. I think it's done right now. Uh, the Omicron, uh, we just had it in our household right now. We're, uh, we, we're in lockdown. And you're, you, we were just talking about beforehand, it's just, it's gotten to the point where the virus is mutated to the point where it's just a cold. And so any craziness beyond that, and again, it's still gonna be those people who are vulnerable are still gonna have problems, but hopefully those people are now protecting and protected and the virus is mutated to the point now where it's, so I think it's already there. Anything beyond this, that's why I think part of the political union is gonna come from is we're gonna see a backing down from the virus by those, who are on the other uh, side. And then on, on this side, hopefully we'll see much more grace and unity um, come. So that's, that's yes, yes, and yes. What do you think? <laughs> uh, man, I, I yeah, <clears throat> I would have said, I would have said a year ago <laughs> that it was gonna be in the rearview mirror, but uh, uh, I think it will be. I, I, I mean, I, I think that, that um, it's gonna be around, but it's not going to be an issue any more than than um, people getting flu vaccines if they want to because they don't want to get the flu. And if you want to get a COVID vaccine, you can. If you don't, if you're concerned about getting COVID, but it's not going to be um, it's not going to be lead, leading the news every night like it is now. Yeah, I yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. And again, this isn't a political podcast. Didn't mean to no. turn it that way, but hopefully it'll be something that we can put behind us and get united about some other things. Yeah. Um, so in summary, God wants you to become like Christ. Amen. And he has given his spirit inside of you to make you more like Christ. And that yeah. spirit is the deepest part of each of us and who we are. And each day, each week, and each year, you get a do-over with the Lord. Uh, to become the person he wants you to be, the person you want to be. And we want to encourage you to take advantage of this time and to uh, pause, pray, 
ask the Lord and take that time to celebrate those good things and mourn those tough things uh, and place them all before the throne of Jesus. And at the same time, uh, be the type of people who can put what's behind us behind us and press on. Uh, don't be yeah. stuck in the past. Don't be stuck in old habits and patterns. Instead, develop some new patterns because you know what? You can do it by the power of Christ in you. Yeah. Having said that, uh, we also are, are very thankful for all that God has done and continue to do in our lives, but also in legacy. And uh, you can check out more at our true legacy.com. Uh, we would love for you to, to do that and to jump on and, and um, become a sponsor with us or also uh, join our prayer team. Uh, all those things are, are available to you. And Bill and I enjoy doing this ministry. And if this podcast is something that's encouraging to you, this is also a great time to share it with somebody else to say, hey, you know what? Uh, I listened to this podcast and it really encouraged me because we would really appreciate and deeply appreciate you sharing this podcast yeah. with somebody else. And if you don't already subscribe, we'd love for you to subscribe. And if you haven't already given us a five-star review, we'd really appreciate that because that really does help us. And again, thank you for listening. We do appreciate it. And let's make this year a banner year, no matter what's going on in the world. May we be people who continue to be disciples who make disciples. Amen. Amen.